So let's start with how to price a bond. We're gonna need four inputs for this. So the first one I have here is N equals four. So this is just the number of years of this bond. So we're gonna say four years. And then we need the payment. See here, payment equals 50. So we're saying every year the bond pays the holder $50. Then next, we're going to need the interest per year, which we're saying as 4%. And then lastly, we're going to find the future value, which is 1,000 in this example. And that just means at the end of the bond, the notional amount or the principal amount that needs to be repaid is equal to $1,000. Now, if you have a financial calculator, you can punch all four of these inputs in and then hit compute PV and it will give you the answer. Um, and the, the price of the bond. But what I'm gonna do here is actually walk you through how this calculation works. So we can think about it in terms of uh, years, right? So I'm gonna map this out. So year, so one right here, two, three, and four. So we're just gonna have to take the cash flows of each year and divide it by the, um, the interest rate um, annualized to that period of time. Okay, so the first year we're just gonna receive the payment, which is $50, but then we have to discount it back one year at a rate of 4%. So we would actually take 1.04, and that would give us the total value in present value of the cash flow from that year. Then we're gonna do year two, which again, in year two, we're gonna get the payment, which is $50, and this time we're gonna to have to take it to 1.04, so one plus 4% to the power of two because we're discounting it back two years. Now for year three, it's also gonna be $50 payment, but this time we have to discount it back three years. And then finally in year four, not only are we gonna receive our payment of $50, but we're also gonna receive the $1,000 notional amount. So this will actually be $1,050. And this time we have to discount it back four years. So we put it to the exponent of four. And now you can basically calculate these one by one, find out the value of each year, which I'll show you here. So the first year, our present value of that cash flow is actually $48.08. The second year, the value of that cash flow is fifty or forty-six dollars and twenty-three cents. Year three is forty-four, forty-five, and the final year is where most of the value comes from, which is eight ninety-seven point five four, and then that gives us a total present value of one thousand thirty-six dollars and thirty cents. Now, if you had just put that in your financial calculator at the very start and so computed for present value, you would have got the exact same amount. You saw what was going on in the calculation behind the scenes, but now let's take a look at the calculator shortcut. So all we have to do is plug these four things in. So four periods, so I'm gonna hit four, then N, um, 50, then payment, um, four, then the interest, so that's the, that's the yield to maturity, IY, and then 1,000 for future value. And then we're gonna hit present value, and we see it's the same number as what we said before. Um, and so it's always gonna come out as a negative, but you can pretty much ignore that. And so there's our answer. One important thing to note is that because the present value exceeds $1,000, we can say that this bond is trading at a premium. And the easy way to tell whether a bond will be trading at a premium is whether um, the payment rate or the coupon rate, which is the payment divided by the notional or the future value, exceeds the interest per year that the market expects, right? So in this situation, we had a $50 payment, which means that our, our coupon rate was actually 5%, which is greater than the interest per year of 4%, which means this, bomb's trading, this bond is trading at a premium. But let's see what happens if we decrease our payment rate to say 30. Now we've got a payment of 30, which implies a coupon rate of 3%, but 3% is below the interest per year or the yield to maturity, which implies that our bond should actually be trading at a discount. So if you put in 
all of these four inputs at the top into a financial calculator, or you do the same kind of calculation that we did before, you'll find that the present value for this bond is actually $963.70, which is less than $1,000. So the market expects an interest rate of 4%, that's the yield to maturity, but this bond only pays 30, so no one would be willing to pay $1,000 for it. They'll be willing to pay less than $1,000 for it. You could be asked to find the price of a bond that pays semi-annual. So let's go with the exact same specifications of the first bond we valued, which had uh, four years, a payment of 50, uh, yield and maturity of 4%, and a fair value of $1,000. How would we adjust this for if the bond paid semi-annually? Well, we would have to double the number of payment periods. So instead of four, we'll go to eight. Each payment would be cut in half. So instead of paying $50 once per year, we're actually paying $25 twice per year and now the interest uh, the, the yield to maturity for each period in this goes gets cut in half from 4% to 2% okay and then the formula is gonna look a lot like before where the, you know the price of the bond or the present value is equal to the you know the payment of 25 over uh, 1.02 that's the new discount rate plus 25 over 1.02 to the power of 2. But this time, instead of going to 4, we actually go to 8. So the last one will be 1,025, right? The $1,000 notional plus the $25 coupon payment divided by 1.02 to the power of 8. And the, these dot, dot, dots represent 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's just make it easier on ourselves this time to find the present value and use a financial calculator. So we're going to put 8 for the period, 25 for the payment, 2% for the interest per year, 1,000 for future value, and we will compute the present value and find that it's $1,036.63. Now, if you have a TIBA2 calculator, you can do the exact same thing in the same order. You may find yourself working a problem where you're given the following four inputs. So the same number of years as before, n equals 4. Payment still equals 30, paying $30 a year, which is a 3% coupon rate like we uh, talked about before. Future value is still $1,000. But now we know the present value, which is $980. We're, just, we're given that. We know what it is. But we're told we need to find the yield to maturity. Right, And the interest per year, the I over R, is the yield to maturity. Well, how do we find that information? You're basically going to need to plug all these four inputs into a financial calculator to do that. But you can see how it looks with this formula right here. At the bottom, we have the same formula we use when calculating bond price. But now we know bond price, which is $980. What we don't know is the yield to maturity, which is used to discount the cash flows. But we can find that by plugging all four of these inputs at the top of the screen into a financial calculator and then computing for I over R. This will be very similar to our other uses of the financial calculator. So we'll start with four for the number of periods, 30 for the payment, 1000 for future value, but now when I'm putting in present value, I need to make it negative to show that there's an outflow of money at the beginning and then inflows with the payments and the future value later on. So make sure to make that negative and then compute the yield to maturity, which is 3.55%. And there you have it.